chef. Hey, chef. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How is everybody out there? Good to see you all. Even though we can't see them. I'm visualizing. Gotcha. Are they naked? They say I don't have to answer that. They say you're supposed to visualize people in, in large groups that are watching you naked. That's only if you have trouble public speaking, not as a rule. Oh, well, we do have problems public speaking because we don't know which words to say. That's why they put us down here in the barrel room where there aren't any people. We use the curse words too much. <laughs> All right. Um, much better format for us. Hey, we, we had a bang up week last week that um, Larry O'Brien zooming in with his, uh, his brilliance, Master Psalm, uh, Jackson Estate representative. We had a blast. So much information to look out. Thank you everyone for being a part of that. We had at least 20 people here at the restaurant and so many of you out there watching it from home in the safety of your own home. It was just, a, it was a great with the, the amount of bottles we sold was overwhelming. So thank you for all your support. Thank you. Yes. It's a great turnout. It's a great night. And like I said, we will keep doing our virtual stuff alongside of our in-person stuff. And so this is for, gosh, we're in July. Happy. So happy July, everybody. Happy July. And, um, you know, since it's July, we should probably have something refreshing, thirst quenching, etc. So we're going to start off with a beautiful Sancerre from Bouchard. And this is classy. You've got a, you've got a beautiful bottle there. And Chris and I have always been big fans of Sancerre, mm. Ouvre. The Loire Valley mm. gives us so much quality, so much quality. And not to mention their thousands of years Thank of you. wine making. So that, that helps. Yeah, a little bit of a head start. Yeah. So Sancerre is Sauvignon Blanc. And we, we've been doing some Sauvignon Blancs uh, recently. And I think this would be, oftentimes you'll hear me describe other Sauvignon Blancs and I compare them to French Loire Valley. And I really do feel like this is the standard for great Sauvignon Blanc. So as you pour your glass and hopefully you're pouring alongside some beautiful things that Chris has prepared for you in your box, um, what did we, what did you, what did you slide in there? Did oh, you, you've got a great little starter here. Very refreshing, good hot weather stuff. We've got the return of spring fever goat cheese from Prodigal Farms. This is one of my favorite cheeses from this creamery. Um, with the, my top favorite due to return next week. Um, but love this style of chef. What, you have a, a crumbly center with a creamy out, out exterior. So it's a brie-like on the exterior, very chalky and traditional chev in the middle. It's a great contrast, beautiful, almost citrusy uh, to this. It's so bright. Um, so we're, we're happy these are out of the cave uh, and back into uh, our rotation. And of course, goat cheese and Savlon. You can't go wrong, you really can't. And uh, it's accentuated with, a, with some roasted local vegetables. We're obviously just getting inundated um, with so many beautiful things from finally multiple farms across the town and, and county so you've got a beautiful rotation of everything you've got a little beet a little carrot a little rainbow shard um, a little other a couple other little treats in there as well but just a, a great little melody medley excuse me um, it's just gonna be bright and it's, it's really gonna play off the goat cheese very well and I think the, the Sancerre as well yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things to take note here from this area, you're also going to get a hint of greenery, not just mm -hmm. the fruit. And that really plays off well off your, your vegetables. The goat cheese, Sauvignon Blanc, world class. It's probably, it might be the most obvious wine pairing in all the food world. It just really has an affinity for goat cheese, Sauvignon Blanc does. And I, I think you'll see it here. The brightness, the 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 assertiveness, there, there is a, a hint of florality here, but really driven through citrus fruits. A hint of bitter, which a makes, bit. which yeah, makes which it, I like. yeah, that, and 
Interesting. <clears throat> this is hand picked. One of the you know one of the last men standing in that department. He's very few wineries or or well heck they're farmers. Let's face mm. it, are willing to put that kind of time and expense into their wines anymore. You see often that the hand picking is going by the wayside, but this wine is hand picked and destemmed. So that that natural slight bitterness that we have here is just part of the way the the grape grows in this particular part of Sancerre, and that makes for a very good food wine. So when Chef is balancing out his dish with with a proper wine, here you will see the bitterness really helps with a lot of foods. This can go not only with the, 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 the well, I guess it's now summer vegetables. I want to say spring, mm -hmm. but now we're officially into summer. But it goes great with we're on with the, the fence. Yeah, we're yeah. On, with the earthiness. Mm. The, that greenery pairs well. That bitterness helps balance off some of the sweetness of some of these sweeter veg that Certainly we're getting. Certainly the carrot. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the beet gets a little sweet when you when it's roasted like this. So sure. Not in a, in a, in a pure form, but uh, yeah, that's going to play off that perfectly. Yeah, but there's just this little, there's a little of this tropical, underripe tropical fruit in this one that lends itself to some other great things you may may enjoy this summer. Because I do feel this is a very good summer wine. Mm. Uh, seafood. This screams for seafood. You will love this with just about any kind of seafood you can throw at it. So, cold um, seafood as well. You know, chilled marinated mm. shrimp or uh, anything you wanted to cook and then chill down and just enjoy cold on the patio before dinner uh, or with dinner. I mean, it's a great starter wine. A great thing to, to just enjoy with friends before you have your main event um, or if you just you know, have a light dinner on a you know, weeknight you don't feel like a heavy meal you can just put out some cheeses and seafood and mm -hmm. enjoy some wine and call yeah, it you a couple of years ago you were well it's probably more than a couple of years ago we've been hanging out for a little bit but seems you, like yesterday yeah uh, you used to do this marinated muscle just chill oh, marinated yeah. muscle and I think that would be killer with this for this fresh really yeah, we haven't. I we mean, haven't done I, that gosh, much. have you done it since you've been at O and S? Mm -mm. No, yes. This was yes, this would have been back in Trio days. It didn't work. Cross Creek days, right? Both Trio yeah. and Cross. It was those green lift muscles. Yeah, really yeah. Maybe so we'll see a return maybe we'll, of that maybe this we'll summer. See those again. That'd be great. Uh, so, in other words, um, you know, I talk about this all the time. How wine can trigger memories and things, and you know, just he, did. He, we're, we're talking about. Uh, chilled seafood and uh, it just reminds me of being in the kitchen with Chris professionally as he prepared uh, thousands of those mussels for cool. guests over over probably a decade or so mm -hmm. that, that you were yeah, that, was a, that was a pretty hot item for you for a while it was mm -hmm. it was it really was and it was surprising because you wouldn't think they'd be falling all over themselves for cold mussels but right yeah it, it, it worked. You never know what people are going to like. True. That's why. You got to try it. Yeah, as a chef, you have to try everything. Even if you think they don't like it, you got to give it a shot. There was a magazine that I used to subscribe to. But it was but a fancy one. It was a hardback magazine that only came out, you know, every quarter, I think. You know, food art, you remember. Oh, yeah. Was and beautiful. they used to have a great section in there every time that would be called uh, <clears throat> when they would ask chefs, you know, it was kind of like hit or miss items, you know, things they would try, but it was it was very clever. They would talk about the things that were home runs, and then the the title of the section that they didn't was called "What Do They Know?" <laughs> yeah, and it was all the things yeah. the chefs loved personally, the dishes right. they were the most proud of, and no one ever and bought. No, no one, no one liked no, it but them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do they know? Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. Well, you like what you like, but it, boy, it's. It's also nice when someone else enjoys it too. And True. Share it. Because a lot of times it's work. It's not when you're doing it for someone, mm -hmm. not for yourself. And yeah, so yeah. you want people to enjoy your labor. Absolutely. And you know, I think um, everybody's going to enjoy this pairing. It's absolutely beautiful. If you haven't got into it, you're going to love it. Boy, and it's blue. It's really warming mm -hmm. up a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. The more rounder. The, mm -hmm. Some of those sharp things are, are softening. Um, really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, this, this wine did not have malolactic fermentation, which is a natural kind of rounder. It's a technique that, well, Tyler, our winemaker here does. Um, most winemakers do it for certain things, but if you want to keep that real crisp acidity, if you want to keep that 
that kind of green apple citrus thing going on. You really want to avoid that process in which they did here. Bouchard is, uh, he, he wanted more of a assertive style, but as Chris is saying here, as it warms a little bit, you know, getting down from, you know, probably, we well, I didn't show this all the way. It's probably about 40-ish. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't even. It couldn't have been 40. Couldn't probably 45, and it's probably warming up to around 52-ish yeah, yeah, yeah. right now. But it is interesting to see how that is evolving and, 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 like you said, blooming. If you don't do that with your white wines, particularly with the serious white wines, you should consider doing that. Instead of keeping it chilled, keep your bottle out after you open it and, and let it evolve a little mm -hmm. bit and see the textures change. You'll pick up different flavors behind that textural change that you may find very desirable. And if you don't, just chill it back yeah, down again and go go back to a cooler service temperature. But this is a this is a great little little wine, and how it evolves to temperatures is promising. I like that a lot. And it, it's um, you're getting with white wines, you get two wines in one when you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the reds um, certainly evolve with air and 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 time, just in decanting all those things as they do, but. <clears throat> white wines, I think West, this is why white wines get a bad rap, where most people who are, you know, your serious wine people that you know in your group, mm -hmm. you know, normally red heavy, but... Um, the wine <clears throat> snobs. But it's because I think people are drinking uh, 44 degree, 42 degree white yeah. wine, and they're very refreshing, and, they're, and you get all these notes. But if you never allow it to get to that 52, 55, and, and, and see the complexity of these wines, no, not all of them, of course, but sure, um, that's when you get the second wine in the bottle. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. Sakes are a lot like that, too. Maybe we should do some sakes oh, one day. Wouldn't that be fun? I think it's like every four or seven degrees, you'll get a change in a sake, and, and there's quite a range in which you can serve them from chilled all the way to about as warm as you want to put in your mouth. So. That's also uh, something we do that, and yeah, you know, a lot of you know, I don't know. Some people call it rice wine. Uh, that's a that's a whole different subject. We're gonna stick right now to this beautiful white from the Loire. The Loire, the Loire. Is where we got, of course, and this is the mother grape, the parent grape of Cabernet Sauvignon. So if it weren't for Sauvignon Blanc, there would be no Cabernet. The most, Thank you, Sauvignon yeah, Blanc. Yeah, that's right. The biggest, most grown grape on the planet. And it's all because of this little white. So, Cap Franc, not a derivative, or is a derivative? Cap Franc and, and, and Sauvignon Blanc got it on, and that's where Cabernet Sauvignon came from. As I've grown older, as you well know this, mm -hmm. I prefer a Cap Franc over a Cap Sav any day of the week. You do, absolutely. Any day of the week. So, what you're saying is next week we should have Cap Franc? Not that I'm suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> right, sure. Do what you will with that. All right, so that was delicious. I'm gonna God, revisit. It was we're gonna revisit that later. And also that yeah, that's the complexity that's, that's of that. That's not gonna leave the table. Either. Yeah, no, no. Okay. That that was that was really interesting too, because a lot of times in a white wine, the bitter can be exposed <clears throat> from warming up. That one actually dissipated as it warmed. Oh, it did. The, I, I found that the 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 blossoming of the texture kind of hid that hid hid more of that bitter. Well, and, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, too. I really haven't thought about it before, but, you know, all those uh, tart apples and things, you know, that always serve the big, heavy breeze and mm -hmm. uh, things like that because that the tartness just needs that taming quality of fat. Yeah. Um, but th that process is happening in the glass. Yeah. You know, without sure was. the... It was fattening up. Yep. Without the uh, accelerant. Delicious. So... We thought about doing two whites. We were actually on board for doing that, and then last second I told Chris we're going to switch it up. But he's quite all right with that because he saw what I switched it to. Now we were we. Uh, it wasn't we, a bad choice though. No, you know, no, what a lineup. No, we we great lineup. Yeah, we, as always. That's a great thing. We keep finding all these great wines, and we're going to drink them with you eventually. You just close your eyes and grab two. They're going to be great. But we do have a a, a, a nice. Well, I guess reserve of uh, wines that are coming up over the next couple weeks and I'm really looking forward to sharing them with you.
But right now, I'm going to share this one with Chef Chris. And we are going to be happy. So this is Sagacio's Zinfandel. This is their, just their Thank standard you. entry level. And it really does provide, well, actually, their whole line does. So um, I had, I, there was a certain somebody that was looking for a birthday present for a Zen lover, and I got them one of their, uh, I, I ordered in a, a special bottle that was you know, roughly about twice the expense of this, and but it drinks like double what it should be. You know, it's just amazing. Um, and that's the way their wines are. They have a lot of single vineyard stuff, and they are quite a bit pricier than what we're gonna have here today, but I can assure you they're worth the money, so. Um, you will get a little sticker shock, possibly, if you're not used to paying, you know, 40 or $50 for a good Zen, but they drink well above that price point. That's the beauty of it. And boy, didn't we prove that a few weeks back with that Geyserville Zen? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, Absolutely. I think so many, so often, and you know, Zen is easily, Zen and Petit Syrahs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I have a really hard time warming up to them. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things when I'm going to have a Zen or a Petit Syrah, I go immediately to the price tag because I don't want to drink anything under 30 bucks. Because historically, that's going to be out of my palate. And, and we all have different palates. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Some people just chase that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Um, but you've been finding these, these wines that are drinking so far above their price points where... And I, what was the Zen? I know it was from Geyserville. I don't remember. That was from Marietta. Yeah. Marietta. Marietta of course. But, uh, Marietta Sellers. They do out, wonderful outstanding. Job. And uh, Sagacio has been in this a long time. You know, back when I used to have a wine program, always had a Sagacio. It, it mm -hmm. usually didn't it, have the higher tiers uh, like Chef Ed explores. But, um, you know, that's another advantage when you're blind shopping. You know, these guys have been mm -hmm. in making wine for what, three decades? Maybe oh. longer? Well, yeah, the actual- 80s, 90s? How about the 1890s? Cause when in this, California? Yeah, 1890s, isn't that crazy? That's so this is, this is one That's of the, longer. Yeah. <laughs> so this family has uh, been instrumental in, in uh, let's face it, American winemaking since the 1800s. That's pretty amazing. Now, of course, prohibition caused some issues, but well, these are the, this at is, the store. They still have the same properties, and um, they had a little, <laughs> they, of course, they had a little layoff there, but I'm sure they were still making some for their own consumption. But yes, uh, and, and for and, the wagons at night. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're uh, steeped in history of American wine history. It, it doesn't get much older than the 1890s for for vineyards, and this is. Uh, you know, you can taste the, these vines, these particular vines here are all 30 years plus. And so that's, that's, that's some old vines. Yes. In. Yeah. We, and if you don't know, the older the vine, the less the, the vine will produce, less fruit that is. And typically if it's a good vine, you would I mean, you're going to keep it around because why would you dig up a vine that's not producing delicious fruit? So as it's delicious, delivering you these delicious grapes it's also giving you less of them which in theoretically is going to give you more concentration of flavors and fruits and i think this is a great representation of an older vine zinfandel what it can do chef real quickly before we venture too far off what was your pairing for this oh you got a real treat here so we've got some beautiful braised short ribs um boneless these are from Brasstown. uh North Carolina, beautiful company. We really love supporting them. Um, just, I, I wish you could have seen them raw. Uh, but just gorgeous marbling on this, really great ratios on these. So did a traditional braise, uh, rubbed them uh, and, and, and salt and pepper, seared them. I didn't do flour like you would do in the winter time. We have a lot of people who are not doing the gluten thing, so to me it's not worth it. Um, just salt and pepper, got a good hard sear on this, put it in the roasting pan, um, bouquet garni, mirepoix, red wine, stock. We let these roll for about four and a half hours, let them chill down in the liquid, took them out of their braising liquid, then reduce that liquid down. 
You'll notice they're not swimming in their liquid. Uh, Chef and I were talking about this earlier. You know, people say they don't like, you know, meats are better in the winter, which is absolutely ridiculous because all we do is grill out meat all summer long. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. Didn't but, come from me. It didn't come from me either, but you know what I mean. I mean, it's like, oh, braised meat, this is winter pot roast. No, as you put a T-bone on the grill. Right. Um, anyway, however, it's the, deli I, I do it's think the delivery, delivery that we're talking about. So here. we didn't want it swimming in sauce. Although there's a plenty of sauce present inside and just a little drizzle there. Um, so just a great little summertime meat. You know, this is uh, going to pair with this deliciously. Uh, and then we've got our so a real treat yesterday. One of our friends, Andre, is one of our foragers who hikes around the mountains and picking mushrooms, brought us some beautiful chicken of the woods yesterday. It um, is beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. great. It's a great time of year. The mm -hmm. chanterelles are coming in. The chicken yes, of the woods the coming in. the first chanterelles of the year are here. Absolutely. And uh, so it's just an exciting time. You know, we get these beautiful mushrooms, these beautiful meats, these beautiful wines that are picked out. You're so, spoiled. You know that? Bold, rotten, so we. And uh, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. As we drink in the cellar. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, sorry to distract you, chef. That's not hard to do. It's this not, wine your, it's is, not your fault. It's uh, my age. I'll be honest with you. This wine is distracting me. It's <clears throat> absolutely delicious. This is so much bang for the buck. Absolutely silky, velvety, beautiful dry tannins on here. I don't, I don't really, I, it's, it's, it's got some alcohol, by the way. This is pushing 15%. I would be, I'm, I'm guessing you know, because of the laws, they allow you to be one and a half percent off in either direction. I'm guessing this is well <laughs> no, over 15%. Yeah. I mean, I can... It's hot. I mean, not, it, not, yeah, not, not a yeah, burn, but I no, mean, it's alcohol. It, it's, it's noticeable that it has some excellent alcohol levels in there. But, but it's, it's, it's really striking the, the blueberry and tobacco on that mm -hmm. with this high alcohol. And a lot of times that, that is not present in the lower uh, tier. But boy, oh boy. Mm. And this is a, this is a wine that leather, yeah, big time. So this good. this wine is is not a simple wine. It, even though it comes at a, a modest price, a lot of complexity here. This is certainly something you should consider having, at least when guests come over. You know, at the very least. I mean, if you even if your neighbor just comes over to borrow a cup of sugar, and this, we'll be happy to be your neighbors that's if right. you want to knock, open knock. some. We're coming in. No, the, uh, the this isn't this isn't necessarily priced where you can't afford to drink it all the time. You can probably be very comfortable cracking this open two or three nights a week, and this is great to have yeah. in your in your repertoire if someone does come over unannounced, because this shows a lot of elegance, and it would hit people in all their sweet spots as far as red wine drinkers are. You have spice, you have fruit, you have alcohol and a beautiful it's it's the tannins are so fine here they're not overwhelming mm -hmm. at all and i do but they're there thank goodness they are and there. the fruit isn't washing them out and so mm -hmm. again, they're, they're balance. a great great balance and i believe this would have a great shelf life with that alcohol there's certainly mm -hmm. some acidity there <coughs> and I, I do believe that which is why you I'm, should buy a case instead of three bottles I'm not talking about 20 years or anything but I do think this has some legs on it I think it I think it'll be fine and it is really really pretty 18 yeah I mean it's 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 a baby yeah you got six years for that easy wouldn't you say oh yeah unless of course you're inviting us over you gotta wow. get three days on that that has got a lot going on it's, it's and it keeps changing what a steal and you know at these prices you know why not uh, we've been very fortunate to to have some you know i guess everything we've done has been under 30 for the most part absolutely and there's very few exceptions I, I can't remember the inception unless it was one of those things where you like said hey here's yeah. a treat I yeah, mean, yeah yeah i don't know if you've done an official over 30. Yeah, it's it's been um, and these are rare like, if you have I mean, anyway. I guess we're, we're talking about twenty four bucks here, twenty four bucks, and it drinks like it's fifty, sixty, easy, easily. So 
Great value one. Great but, gift, but too. Even, just throw you the give price. Give me a red one, friends. A even, great gift. Even without the price, this just, just, just you're going to want this one on its own, own merits despite what the price is. That's for sure. And this is by far the most complex zen that we've had. Uh, I like that Marietta Cellars. Don't get me wrong. It is really delicious. Very and different it was, ones. And it, and it, they are different ones. And I, I think that, um, but this one is just singing to me right it's now. It's bigger. Mm -hmm. This is a lot bigger. And um, <clears throat> the Marietta, I thought was, and this is not an insult to either one, I thought was more elegant. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a... Yeah. That's I mean, what that's just, what makes me think that this is going to age longer because it is a little bit muscular. God, it's so good. But that's the beauty yeah. of it. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not a, like I like it more, I like it less. Mm -hmm. It's and they're it, different. And that Marietta was a little bit older too, so it, yeah, it, it, it had, had little, time to salt. Time time to yeah, that was a sixteen, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So Great. as we as we go through these these wines over the last well, I mean, we've only been doing the virtual this year, but. Yeah, we've been doing these Thursday night tastings for several years now. And as we build this library of knowledge, it, it, it really is great because we can we can refer back to some things that really impressed us. And now we have a point of comparison and our and our our knowledge gets bigger and broader and it becomes even more <coughs> fun, I think. The more you know about wine, when you you know, and, and obviously taste is something that hits you. It, it just, it's, it's not the label. It's not, you know, because someone told you it's going to be great. Taste is what hits your tongue. And even with all that information you have bouncing around your brain about what's supposed to be good and what was good before and what's supposed to be good in the future, <laughs> it really does matter what runs across your tongue. And I'm, and for me, it, it's almost like, I'm almost even more amazed every time I taste a great wine because of all the things I've learned about wine, which is only a drop in a bucket, by the way. That's true of everything. Though, but, right? but even all after I have to learn about wine, it it still fascinates me every time I, that something delicious comes across my tongue like this. Well, I mean, if tomorrow we said, hey, we want to learn about trees. <laughs> oh, God. Doesn't mean, I mean, 10 years from now, we wouldn't know anything about trees because mm -hmm. we would just scratch the surface. Doesn't right. mean every time you walk outside, you don't admire the trees. That's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it, regardless, I mean, you're always going to think that no matter how much knowledge you accumulate. Hopefully. You'll, you'll always think, because you I'm just scratching the, the surface, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't take away from what we do know and the beauty we mm -hmm. see with our senses. Absolutely. Regardless. That's why we have them, right? To enjoy them. Well, let me make sure. Yeah, just double check. Um, you might not have liked that at all. Well, I don't think. I mean, you were talking. <laughs> I might have distracted and, uh, your you taste buds. Know, you know, you know, I don't taste when people are talking. That's true. It's a common issue. Well, I think that you can see how this also might open you up to if you're not a Zen person. I think someone that tries this could easily fall in love with Zen because this isn't your, I guess. Yeah, it's not your typical entry levels in, even though the prices of that. But you know, we've 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 dabbled in some, um, I would say more, I guess, juvenile or immature styles that were very tasty that we enjoyed. They were just they weren't didn't have so many dimensions as this wine does. And I you know that's you know I like both. I like the I like the simple ends and I like the complex. You know you know me I like just about everything but I think this is a, a, a great this is a, the kind of Zen that I would say you know uh, cab drinkers watch out because this might steal your heart I wouldn't pick this as a Zen in a blonde taste it's wonderful I really wouldn't I, I would have I would go I would go I cab think, I think any, I, think I tried any, that blindfolded I think I think I think a lot of cab lovers could fall in love with that for sure well uh, well, I certainly hope that you've enjoyed these pairings. And while we got you, we should probably say something about what's going on. Like, okay, so we've been open now three weeks? Yeah, this three, will be our third week. Three weeks, mm -hmm. and things have been going great. The governor has required everyone to wear masks now, not just uh, employees of businesses. So, you know, we've come across a little tiny bit of pushback mm -hmm. on that, but hardly any. Com com it could have been a lot worse. Well, I think we've had it easy compared to what a lot of 
outfits. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that what's the, our saving grace is our people clientele. only have to wear them for 20 feet. That's true. So yeah, once, once you get, you get to, get the to the your table, table, you take them off. I, take think, I think when you have to stay in it, right. the entire experience, as you do in a lot of places. Yeah, and I think yeah. our clientele is more sensitive to other people's you know, yeah, situations. I would agree. They're not as quite focused on themselves. Agreed. So, thank you to all you thank people you. out there helping us keep the restaurant open because uh, we got to flatten that curve again, it looks like. And if we do that, then we're one step closer to getting back to 100%. Well, it's not going to go away. And no. we just have to learn to live with it and, and be smart and sensitive and mm -hmm. uh, help each other along the way. And uh, it's not going to be easy. Yep. But uh, we're uh, devoted to making this work. Mm -hmm. um, so just know that. And we'll, we'll keep trying and plugging away and doing our best to... Um, Keep the everybody we care about, which is our staff and our customers alike, safe and well. Tyler, uh, today well, we've made some more hand hands. Hand more, the more hand sanitizers. So we, we're not just making wine; we're making hand sanitizer sanitizers, and of course, Ben, Mr. Webb, there is making incredible surgical grade masks right here in town. Manufacturing right here in Mount Airy, North Carolina. We're very, very Amen. proud of that. Team Amen. That we're here, and they're you know they're being distributed all over America. And that's another great thing about what's going on is seeing how people are stepping up, uh, not just rolling over in adversity, but stepping up and, and, and trying some new things and trying. Forged. Yeah. Getting forged. forged. Yeah. And so we're very fortunate to be in, in good, good company, I would say. We are. We're and, very, very fortunate. And we got July 4th coming up. So, you know, we're in July. You know, July 4th to me is an is a incredibly special time uh, for my family it always has been and you know we're we're big believers in this country and we're very proud that this country was founded and we like to celebrate it uh chris and i decided to celebrate by working we do that a lot because <laughs> that's what we love we to don't do. have a lot of sense well you know we closed the, we closed the restaurant on july 4th night and chris like and i always do yeah, we always do because most people aren't going out to eat. On, we do on, lunch and then... Unless yeah. you're at a lake or a beach, you're not yeah, really going to go out we, to we eat. Were at, if we're on the mountains, we're in a resort town. We're a resort, like the mountains yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Makes sure. sense. Yeah. Like, uh, not here. Mill. Yeah, Old Mill, that was a oof, yeah, yeah, yeah. party time. Yeah. Poor, poor Taylor up there at Trillium is going to get run over. He's going to get beat up. I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying hi to some of my but yeah, chef well, friends. are going to be working very February. hard. February, we don't want to hear it. Yeah, while they're out there at home and... Your home for three months. That's so. true. So, <clears throat> since we were closed, we decided that we would just do the chef's table, and so we have uh, we have a few seats left. If anybody is interested in doing the chef's table with us on July fourth, it'll be very small company. It'll be Chris and I and a couple guests. <clears throat> we have two 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 groups, not groups, but two separate yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, reservations, mm -hmm. and the restaurants closed. So. There's no, no ambient stuff in the background. It's just going to be us. So. And I think part of this is we did this the week before the restaurant opened. We, yes. we had some very special people that were celebrating anniversaries, and we wanted to we wanted to do something nice for them. And it helped us kind of get back into restaurant mode. Well, the restaurant mode that we want to be in. You, the, the you, right were, you were in restaurant mode. Of and I don't putting, ever want to be in that mode again. <laughs> and putting everything in a box and sending it away. But it, it was a really special time. It was Chris and I and, and six other guests in the restaurant, and there was no one else, and we, we enjoyed that. Uh, so it would be a great it'd be a great life. Yeah, to we just do, do chef tables. No offense to all of our employees, of course. It would be a great <laughs> life to just do chef tables. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna do it again this Saturday. If anybody's interested, please feel free. Yeah, to... Yeah, we're full on Friday, so we can't accommodate yeah, Friday anyone we're else on Friday, but. Um, if you want a, an alternative uh, independence celebration, yeah. what could be a better celebration of our independence than our food mm -hmm. independence? We are having a corporation-free <laughs> celebration <laughs> where we do food grown in our town yeah. and seafood caught off our coast. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to have one thing from a, another country or from somebody you don't know or from a... There won't be a chemical you can't pronounce. Yes, and it's it'll be going wholesome to be, food. 
wines made by people who care and love what they do mm -hmm. and not one thing that's thrown in a thrown in a bag so it would be a great way to celebrate the best of what we are as this, as this wonderful Absolutely. free people yes so think about it and come see us yep and um I guess everything else is business as usual. We're still open five days a week. Mm -hmm. We're doing lunch five days a week. We're doing dinner Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're still doing our tastings in person on Thursday night. So when you're ready for that transition <clears throat> to come on in, or if you're, like, say, in another state and just watching and you want to come visit us, do that too. Uh, I think um, we have several people coming to the show's table from very far apart. Oh, right? all over the place. Again, yeah, just so. like it was before the... Mm -hmm the epic shutdown but uh and also keep an eye out on our social media if you're not a part of our email newsletter program please send us a, a note and, and sign up uh we're gonna let this little holiday travel season kind of pass us by this time of year uh even with the um, suggestions and restrictions that we're uh mm -hmm. under everybody's going to the beach going to the mountains people have made their reservations long before mm -hmm. um this time <clears throat> so we're, we're not in our normal time but but having said that you know we are, are committed to getting back to doing more pop-up tastings pop-up chef's tables more weeknight things that are much uh they're a lot of fun and, and not as huge of a commitment you can pop in here on a tuesday or wednesday night for an hour and a half and we'll do some fun stuff so keep an eye out on our social media and our newsletter for that and yeah the, those are coming soon we're gonna let a couple of weeks of travel season yeah. to uh, die down but trust me those are going to be a mainstay of what we do and something that Ed and I are committed to doing. And, and so keep an eye out for that. And we're still possibly going to do one of these from the Nearscombe's back porch, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for sharing some time with Chris and I. We love, we love doing this. We're going to keep doing it until you're sick of it. And we're going to keep doing it after that. Enjoy. Absolutely. Cheers. Take care. Cheers. Happy 4th.